Hello, good morning, God's people. I want to welcome you once more to um, the series of teachings that we have commenced to do like three weeks back. Now we are on the 12th episode of Breaking the Seals. Breaking the Seals has to do with understanding, coming into the experience of the seal that, um, of God that are the life, that is the life book. All of them totally together, gathering them together is the life book, or they are the life book leading to the ultimate redemption of man. We know Christ has, has uh, actually performed our redemption legally, but we're coming into it experientially as the seals are opened. And we said, um, as the seals are opened by the Lamb, um, the, one of the children said, come and see. And John came to see. And then um, this, all of these activities of um, the horsemen that appeared, um, which are based on the book of Zechariah chapter 1, about the horsemen that appeared in order to um, bring divine retribution upon Israel because of what they had done. Uh, all of these have to do with the divine processes of God in our hearts so that we can come out fully in his image. Praise God. Uh, and I want us to, so we've got to seal one, seal two, seal three, seal four, where death actually comes to the natural man. And then we get to seal um, the fifth seal, where the, the resurrection of the souls that were under the altar took place. And then we get to the sixth seal. And at the sixth seal, God is judging uh, the heavens. God is judging uh, the powers of the heavens. We talk so much about that. We like to see the, ser uh, the series from 9 till now, and you will see a lot about that. And series um, episode 9, 10, and 11, and of course this one also. Now, so what we see is that um, um, in, in, in the sixth seal, we see that judgment comes to the governmental forces over the universe so that to effect a change whereby the rule of the, of the saints are uh, enforced or is enforced on the earth praise god so that we can enforce that rule so that that um, because they have to give way so that the the the, the, the sons of god can begin to reign and um, this is what the scripture means about the sun the moon and the stars the stars are falling down the sun loses its light the moon loses its light and all of that these are um not physical uh uh uh, um, happenings or events they are rather symbolic because they gather I mean the sun is a governor governs the day which is a ruler and then the moon is a governor also which governs the night and is a ruler and then the stars also are rulers mariners use the star to the stars to determine where they're going upon the seas of this world hallelujah you know the seas have to do with uh, the um, um, the, 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 seals have to, um, the seas rather do with nations, peoples, and uh, tongues, and all that. So, symbolically, also, as mariners use the stars to govern over the seas, so also we see leaders also using the stars to lead them on what to do concerning men. There is absolutely almost no nation on the earth that is not governed in one way or the other by the powers of the heavens. There is no such nation on the earth. Even Israel now, because Israel has not been. Um, totally submitted, submitted to God. They are still governed by the ruling powers of the heavens. Now, the scripture says very well, and I like this scripture so much. It says, For to the angels, as they not subjected the age to come of which we speak, but one in a, in a certain place said, um, uh, who, what, is man, uh, what is man that you acknowledge him or the Son of Man and all that? For you have made him a little lower than the Elohims and all that, and then you have given him glory and honor. You have committed all the works of your hand in, uh, into his hands and all that. And then he said, but we do not see man in that place of authority now, but we see a regent, our regent, Jesus Christ, who is holding that place for us. And when the time comes, we're going to hold that place. The governing authority of the earth is going to be given to us. It's going to be our Lord. It's going to be, we're going to rise up to the place of ultimate authority. And this is what we see in the sixth seal, where... Um, the powers of the heavens have been judged. The leadership of this world is being judged. Now, the leadership of this world being judged, the two leaderships, there are actually two leaderships to this world. The first leadership has to do with the leadership of, um, uh, of spirits, where, whereby Elohims, uh, which are called gods, 
which are called princes, determine the affairs of this world and the affairs of the nations. Now, that is the first one. And then we have their, con um, their counterparts which are on the earth. Their counterparts which are on the earth help to govern. They help to govern being led by them. Now, the scripture says that it's not going to be that way anymore um, when the kingdom, when a particular time comes, which the Bible talks to us as the kingdom is. When the Son of Man comes to take authority and rulership. Now, the Son of Man is going to come through us, the body of Christ, and take authority and rulership so that we can, uh, through us, and then, because he said, he's going to reign until all adversaries is going to be put under his feet and where his feet are on the earth so we're going to be ruling with him and this has great consequences for us but we're going we're going to be talking in lump sums now in summarized versions but later i'm going to be speaking um, um much more later maybe in another series and referring to all of these things i'm talking about right now and talking about them uh in um uh, in particular formats you understand now but it's, it's suffice it for us to know what i'm talking about um right now in the way in which i'm saying it now if you are here this morning i'd like you to help us to know whether you are here or not by liking this uh, video or even sharing it if it has been a blessing to you and i'll thank god for those who join us every morning like this to learn of the word i'd like us to know that it is important for us to learn of this so that we can come into the kingdom age you see you can come into the kingdom age will be here you may not come you may not have come into the kingdom age because um the kingdom age does not um the kingdom age is not about uh, only the time a particular time when it will come but it will be about the season when it comes to us please come and change this to the network of the phone i hope is it the network of the phone all right Thank you. Talking to my director there to change it to the network of the phone because our, uh, um, what do you call it, is um, not reliable all the time. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 the Wi Fi is not always reliable. Praise God. Now, so, so we, we, we see that, that um, the, we are the ones to rule and to reign. So, God here in, in, in the sixth seal. He's talking about the fact that the ruling powers of the heaven, they lose their authority, they, rule, they lose their power, they lose their function over us as a people. Praise God. Then, then apart from that, apart from that, we, we see the second part of that sixth seal. And um, this talks about the angel uh, which rises from the east, bearing the seals, the seal of God. Like I like you to, this is what I always tell people, that when it comes to symbolic language, it is not always the same, but you have to be discerning according to the context, not according to our whims and caprices or what we feel that they should talk about, but according to context. You have to look at context. When the imagery changes, it may be communicating the same thing to us in another way. I wanted to observe that when the fifth seal happened, he told the, the guys that were resurrecting who had completed their, their journeys, they, are, they have come into perfection, they have come to the place of rulership, but it was not yet time for them to start to rule because uh, it was not yet, the, the, the seventh day had not yet come, so it was not yet Sabbath, but they had experienced their own Sabbath because they had gone through their journeys. And God said, okay, don't worry, we wait a little bit on the, the, the number of your, of your brethren and, and fellow servants which shall be killed as you are, will be fulfilled. And then let me say also that the killing that they were subjected to was not the killing of, um, um, you know, somebody who, um, uh, the killing of someone who was beheaded physically and all of that, but they were witness, they were martyrs, they were witnesses. The word martyr or mati is to be a witness to be a witness of the word, you understand, to live con um, uh, in consonance with the witness of the word which we have received. That is what it means for them to be killed in that way. And actually, practically, that is what happens to us. We are killed. Paul said we die daily by the experiences which we have as we go into God's word, as we desire to do the will of God, as we desire to fulfill divine counsel. We have certain uh, we are brought to death. The natural man is brought to death. The natural man which wants to lord it over us is brought to death continually. And that is what we experience. So what happened is that God told them, say, wait until the number of your brethren which shall be killed as you were will be fulfilled. And then so white, uh, white robes were given unto them and all that. And then so they waited. Now in this, uh, uh, and then the, the scripture talks about the fact that the parts of the heavens haven't been judged. And then the waiting 
which they were meant to do was for the reason of other people that would be killed as they were to be fulfilled. Now, by the time that those other people to be killed as they were was fulfilled, we see a panorama in the heavens. And then that panorama begins in Revelation chapter 7 and in verse 1. This is also the sixth seal that it is the second part of the, um, of the workings of the sixth seal that we see. Now, all of these things are very, very important. So that this is because immediately we know and we understand that the, the book of Revelation is not about um, uh, the Antichrist, something coming, something happening, the mountains, the valleys, and all of that. And, uh, you know, and um, nations being brought under some type of control. And When we know that that's not the 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 tone the basic tone of the book of revelation when we know that then it begins to dawn on us that see this is the way we have to walk in it this what what john is talking about was what paul was talking about was what peter was talking about so we know that the perimeters of our function is as a, as the saints of god as the saints of the most high is um will be um uh 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 uh, it, it, it's within a particular scope and then we shouldn't get out of that scope to be waiting for something that is external and then we can always walk within this scope, within this work, working and uh, within the uh, syllabus set for us by the Lord. Now, so what you see that by the time the fulfillment of the awaiting was getting fulfilled, we now see the angel arising from the east and then what was he bearing? He was bearing the seal of God. Remember, it was the seals. Did you get that? It was the seals that brought the first seal, the second seal, the third seal, the fourth seal, which brought death to the natural man, completed. And then it was said a fourth of man was killed. The fourth part of man, not a fourth. The fourth part of men were killed. That's what, that is the completion of the work. You know, three had been killed. The third part had been killed. The third part, the second over two over three had been killed, three over three, you know, um, three over four had been killed. Okay, it was a quarter, four of them, one quarter had been killed, two uh, quarter had been killed, three quarter had been killed. Then the fourth, the last part, had was now killed, which was the operation of the fourth seal, where we see a man upon, um, where we see a man upon. Uh, uh, a throne, I mean, uh, a horse, a green horse, <laughs> sorry, please, distracted there. A green horse, uh, the rider was at a green horse, and it was called death. He had a great sword, and then with, he, he, he executed death over the natural man by the beast of the earth, killed them by death, killed by, you know, but the sword meant that he was going to kill and all that. So he killed the natural man, and then by the time those who experienced the death to their natural man had, ha uh, 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 had finished their testimonies what we see is that they rose from under the altar and had experienced as, as i told us about what that meant that's talking about the rising from under the altar what it means and then that means that they were waiting for the crowning with life which paul said will be given to those people who will be waiting for the appearance of the Lord, not only to himself, because he said he had finished the course, he has run his race, now to him shall be given a crown of life. This is the crowning with life. This is immortality. This is life in the flesh. Praise God. That will be given to him, and not only to him, but to all those who love the Lord's appearing in that day. Praise God. Now, so this is what we see. This is what we have. Um, so by the time we see the, 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 uh, um, the, six, the second part of the sixth seal, we see an angel rising from the east and when he arose from the east he was bearing the seal of god and what was he going to use the seal for then there was another angel before that time that was holding the four winds of the earth that the wind would not blow on any tree or any uh, grass and all that men are trees these are the judgment of individual men hallelujah you know individual people individual whether they are individual men philosophies and um and thought lines and all that but basically yes those ones that are inside me because that's why men are judged men are not judged because they have eyes they have legs they have no it's because of what's in them praise god so so when that judgment before that judgment begins we see that the 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 bearer of the um of the uh, sixth seal arises um and takes the seal of god so he takes the seal of god and then with the seal of god he now cries to the angel that was holding the four, four winds and says, Hot not the earth, don't hurt the sea, don't hurt the earth, don't hurt the sea. You understand what the earth and the sea are all about. The earth, 
um, the sea re relates to fallen humanity, the earth relates to a more stable place, uh, which is more moralistic, you know, the normal guys and all that. And then so, God said, don't judge the two until the servants, don't also judge the trees, individuals and all that, until the servants are of, of the Lord our God are sealed in their forehead. Did you know that what was promised the guys that had resurrected, haven't completed their um, their um, uh, their journey in the fifth in the fourth seal and had resurrected in the fifth seal? They were told that they should wait until their fe the, their fellow servants had who were uh, ordained to die the kind of death they died would be fulfilled. So this this scripture is talking about the servants of the living God to be sealed. So it's the same thing. There are fellow servants that will be killed are these guys that are to be sealed. So it is not, it is not the tribes of Israel that is. He's not talking about the physical tribes of Israel here. You see, because when it comes to the sealing, he's not talking about the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of those physical tribes. You know, he's not talking about the redemption of Israel. Hallelujah. Um, because a lot of people have thought that's what it is. And they have formed timelines, they have formed timelines and different kinds of things that they think um, um, this place means and they have tried to put it within a particular time structure for the body of Christ to follow and all that but that's not what it means it means something entirely different praise God it means the sealing of the servants of our God upon their foreheads Hallelujah. You seal the servants of our God upon their foot. What does this sealing mean? What is the significance of a seal? Now, we're trying to open an account for church. Um, and then the bank said, you should put your seal on it. Um, we're supposed to submit some documents. And then the bank said, we should put our seal on it. You know, they said we should put our seal on it. What, what is the significance of that? Um, um, the seal shows that you are the owner of that document. It shows that the document belongs to you. That's what the seal means. The seal shows that the document belongs to you. Now, apart from the sealing, or apart from the sealing or the seal showing that the document belongs to you, it also shows that you are the author of the content, that the piece of paper belongs to you, and then you are the you are the author of the content. The content we, that is contained there has your approval. It has, it, it is ordained of you. It originates from you. You understand? That is what the sealing is about. Now, so when you seal somebody on their forehead, what does the forehead mean? The head actually relates to the soul. Hallelujah. The, you know, I sometimes, you know, when we relate to God, sometimes when we relate to God, we usually think of God as somebody who doesn't know science. So... Anything that he says that is a little bit scientifically accurate was by chance because you see, God doesn't know, understand science. But God created everything. God created every man. You know, and he understands science. So he has used the forehead to represent our thoughts processes, to represent our souls. Hallelujah. And the Lord says that, um, uh, that they will see the servants of our God on their foreheads. That is related to their... The same thing that was accomplished in the first to the fourth seal upon those guys who had resurrected in the fifth seal, they were the same thing that were to be done upon the servants of our Lord here. And they're going to be now instead of using the symbolism of the four seals, which is the or, 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 or using the symbolism of the door, the four doors that the cherubs closed in there, instead of using that. You know, because the cherubs close four doors, as it were. Come and see. Come and see. Come and see. Come and see. You remember, the cherubs were the ones who locked the door to the way to the tree of life. So, by the time they had gone through those operations of the four or the forces or the opening of the forces, they were they had fulfilled their journeys. Actually, four. The number four actually means totality. It means you. You, you see. It means beyond this, there is nothing uh, and nothing else. It refers to the four cardinal points of the earth: the north, the south, the east, and the west. This is what the four, um, um, the four uh, angelic um, cherubic voices meant. So you understand, even those who carry the throne of God were are four. 
you understand whether in the old covenant or in a cherubic instance it, if you look at ezekiel chapter one you see that the cherubs which which carried the, the throne that mean, to carry the throne means to be custodians of the throne to be custodians to the kingdom realm where the saints rule hallelujah that's what it means now so there were four of them and each of them had four faces now in israel under the law you had the same thing whereby the four priests took the ark of the covenant which is where we were moving into in the first place hallelujah that's very very important for us to note now so we have um so so uh, so it's so the same thing that those guys went through that the other guys also have gone through or are to go through though the symbolisms are different the symbolism of the cherubic of the cherubic operation and the operation of the four horsemen was the thing that the guys in in between seal one and seal five went through praise god but the symbolism given to us here it is symbolism of the showbread the showbread uh, uh, uh represented the 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 um the fruits of the tree of life hallelujah because the showbread are the bread of the priest they represent the 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 the, the, the tree the tree um the fruit of the tree of life the fruit of the tree of life bible said it brings 12 manner of fruits in every i mean um, every season you know one one season one fruit and that's one so every year it brings 12 manner of fruits hallelujah so so we see that this this ceiling and those 12 manner of fruits relate to the numbers of the of the tribes of israel which is 12. so you have to understand that you have to now uh, the question is now to understand the the the, the meanings of the names of the nation of israel thank god because we we are of the 12 tribes of the nation of israel thank god that um, uh, we are recording this uh, if i'm too fast by the time you get to listen to it maybe you're listening to me after the facts as in after we have done the recording you can stop it you can go back and so okay what did i say here you want to maybe it was too fast so because i noticed i'm fast uh, so and i don't want to reduce the speed because I believe that's the way their unction is working um on me today this morning so please you can always reverse re rewind and hear well rewind and hear well rewind and hear well all right so um so we have um this it's the same operation so it, it, the operation of the five seals c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 um i see four their their work was complete by this fifth seal they are resurrected and asking for their reward to rule and all that and to be crowned with life uh it's just the same thing that was used in the sixth seal the second part of the sixth seal the first part of the manifestation of the sixth seal was the destruction and the detronment of the powers that presently governs the natural us in our naturality and that governs this age hallelujah then after that we now see the powers um we now see that um the 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 other things the uh, your fellow servants that need to be redeemed or that need to be rather killed as you were where it's been performed it's been done here and uh, how is it been done by the seal um which that angel brought and it was put anywhere on the forehead of the servants of our god and then so it, it is on the servants of our god now so what is it doing is as he put the first seal you understand we 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 are partaking of the nature of christ the first nature of christ what is the name of the first nature of christ the name is reuben hallelujah you know because um all of the Israel, Israelitish names are established in the heavens. I'm not talking about the heaven where God sits and throne. I'm talking about the stars, the arrangement of the stars. Abraham was um, a stargazer, so God, God ordained, God ordained for His will to be to be represented in the heavens. When I talk about the heavens, I don't mean the heavens where God sits enthroned as God, but I'm talking about this, this, the second. I mean the physical heavens, the the, the cosmic heavens which we see physically here. You know, so each of those names are, are registered there. You understand? So the, by the arrangement of the stars. So the so um, and Isaac was taught by Abraham, and Jacob was taught by, taught by Isaac. So they understood all of this, even though the names were given by their mothers. I believe by it was by divine inspiration, or because they were they also had the same knowledge with their husbands had. Hallelujah. So the first one was Reuben. And then Reuben means behold the son. It is the first, it is the revelation of sonship. One of these days we'll be talking about the seal, the contents of the seal, of the twelve of the of the yeah, 
the 12 ceilings. You understand? We will talk about 12 ceilings. Because I don't want us to enlarge this episode, I mean, this uh, series with so many episodes. Uh, left to me would have been finishing now. So we're going to go to, maybe by God's grace, by the time we finish this, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go to explain the, name, the names of the sons of Israel with the, um, with, uh, call them, the t- that, that series, we call them the ceilings. You know, the mystery of the ceiling is explained. You understand? And then by the time you get to, um, okay, then you have Simeon, which is divine um, divine sight. I mean, like divine hearing. And then you have Levi, which is divine joining. Divine joining. And then you have Judah, which is praise. And then you, by the time you get there, you, you to, down there, you get to um, and the, um, what, what is this now? Um, Benjamin, which is called the son of my right hand, where we are throne far above in the heaven places in Christ Jesus, at the right hand side of God in Christ. This is the workings of the Spirit. This is the way these things are worked out. It is worked out in our souls. Hallelujah. You can't, you can't, as much as the work has been finished, the appropriation of the work has to be according to divine operations and orchestrations. Praise God. Um, in us. God works in us. And this is what is called the ceilings. Now, so through the ceilings, we see um, um, the activities of God in us. So I want us to see the ceilings per se. I want to see the ceilings per se. Um, So Revelation chapter 7, let's read some scripture. And um, I heard a um, saying, okay, uh, should we start from, the, from verse 1? Okay. Nah. And after these things, I saw four angels standing, angels standing in the four corners of the earth and holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any man. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, uh, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Did you see? Mm-hmm. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes uh, of the children of Israel. Did you see that? Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses have told us that this is the number of those who are going to heaven. Because in, I think in Revelation chapter 15, you see these guys on Mount Zion. You understand? You see chapter 15 or chapter 14? You see them in, on Mount Zion standing with a lamp. You understand? So they said this is the... This is, because they don't understand Mount Zion. You see, Mount Zion is the highest place of communion with God. That's Mount Zion. He said, I've chosen, I've delighted in Mount Zion above all the dwelling places of Israel. You understand? Ah... Um, and in Jerusalem. So Jerusalem and Mount Zion are synonymous terms for the most desired places uh, realm in God. And that means the most desired dwelling place of the believer with the Lord. You understand? So that's what it means. Yeah, about I think about 20 years ago, God was teaching me about uh, today. This is where in 2021, about 2014, 2015. Uh, yeah, the Lord was teaching, to me, teaching me about Mount Zion. 2014, 2013. The Lord was teaching me about Mount Zion. The Lord was teaching me about the three different uh, uh, three different dwelling places of Israel. There was Israel, and there was Judah, and there was Jerusalem. And within Jerusalem, you find Mount Zion. So sometimes we use Jerusalem and Mount Zion together, you know, synonymously. So when the scripture says that these are the people, uh, uh, 144,000 were, were standing with the lamp on Mount Zion, it doesn't mean that they went to heaven. It is not a picture of heaven, it's a picture of the highest places of our dwelling with God. The best, our, our dwelling place with God, the best place we dwell in with God. You understand? That's where we dwell in with God. You know, upon Mount Zion. That's why I say, upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and, um, and holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. So, our, the fullness of redemption comes up on Mount Zion. Did you get that? Now, so it was the 144,000 that were standing with God on Mount Zion, I think in the Revelation chapter 14 or 15, thereabout. But we see here that it was the same number of the sealed. So they're talking about the same thing. You know, it's, it's the same thing. The number of the people or the guys that were sealed out of the nation of Israel were 144,000 people. You understand? So it's the same thing. So what is about the sealing? The 144,000 
is a number uh, is a multiple of 12. 12 is a number of divine government and a thousand there is the number of immortality he said in, in in the day you eat of it you shall surely die so the day the highest extremity the furthest extremities of um of of the extension of the day is a thousand years you understand and um, the lowest is 24 7 or a moment of time when god is doing a particular thing you know that day we say on that day the, the only the mount, the mount uh, on, uh, on that day only the name of the lord shall be held high or something on that day when i come you know that day may realize uh, may, may 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 talk about a particular season of divine operations of god among his people he may he may talk about a season he may talk about an extended time he may talk about um 20, 24 hours you may talk about a moment in time and the furthest the furthest explanation or definition of the day is a thousand years a day to law is a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day praise god so that's the furthest um explanation uh, or, or definition of a day to god so um so when so when you by the time you get to a thousand years you are already clocked immortality you cannot die you understand and of course when it comes to our immortality we don't have to clock the the 1000 years physically the moment our bodies are changed it does mean that we cannot die anymore hallelujah and um, how will this thing happen how will these things happen um there are some thoughts that go through my mind and i'm seeing certain things and i'm observing certain things but i i am not at liberty to to teach these things now because I, I want to be firmly established in them how the resurrection will take place. You understand? How do, I know we, we, we are no longer part, we, we are believing differently from the Pentecostal order which believes that a certain trumpet will, will blow from the heavens and all, of, and all of a sudden we shall be changed. You know, we know that the trumpets are talking about a message. You understand? Messages. And there's a last trump. And I usually ask people, if, you did, if you, you're waiting for the last trump, Okay, you're waiting for the trump of God according to Thessalonians. But then, you're waiting for the trump of God according to Thessalonians. But then, there is, we uh, now talked about the last trump. And then by the time John began to talk, we know that John was talking about the, the seventh angel, when it shall begin to sound. The seventh angel, the voice of the seventh angel, when it shall begin to sound. Then, the, um, the, um, uh, when it shall be going to stand, then the mystery of God shall be finished, which he has ordained according to what he has spoken through, uh, or through the prophets or through the prophets. Hallelujah. So, the 144,000, 12 is the number of divine government. That means, upon these people, divine government is established and, they, and it was multiplied by immortality. So, this is um, uh, simple uh, simple symbolism that we can easily understand and know that these guys have divine government in their lives and they'll be given immortality. So that's why they have 12,000. And by the time you multiply 12 by 12, 12 you have you come to 144,000. You know, uh, you know there are 12 tribes, okay, and then each of those tribes have um, um, uh, have 12,000 in them. So 12,000 by that tw by 12 by 12 you understand it's 144 you know and then by the time you multiply it by the thousand which is the number of immortality that is by the 12,000 there you know that you're coming to um to god is talking there about immortality god is talking there about um our coming into the kingdom age to rule and it is a Melchizedek order of priesthood which cannot be destroyed it cannot be destroyed it remains forever and ever hallelujah so we we read on okay verse 9 after this i beheld and lo a great multitude which no man can could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamp clothed with white robes <laughs> and palms in their hands did you see that now, you, what this time that I will confirm to you that these are the guys that were promised to be killed, like just like the guys under the, I mean, uh, whose souls were rising from the under the altar in the fifth seal. You understand? These are the these are the guys that were promised them. He said, "Wait, and uh, unto the number of your brethren and your fellow servants, 
which shall be killed as you were, will be killed, will be fulfilled. So they are your brethren and your fellow servants. And then this guy that were told to go, they're given what? White robes. And then this guy that were eventually now sealed, because the sealing is a type of killing. It's a gradual killing. Gradual killing that has to do with the killing of the natural man in us. Hallelujah. So they were killed as their fellow servants. Okay. And then eventually they were now given the robe. I mean, uh, what do you call it now? They were given the uh, white robes, the same white robes that were promised, the other, I mean, that were given to the other guys who, had, who were waiting for them to come in. The same white robes was given to them. Uh, and then you now see that um, uh, the congregation in heaven was mentioned there. And and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which seated upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. Hallelujah. So they had gained throne authority, uh, salvation unto the fullness, and then throne authority. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders, and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto God, unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying uh, unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which have gone, come out of great tribulation. Some people always talk, share about the great tribulation, the great tribulation, the great tribulation. Um, yes, I know that the end of this is going to be tighter, it's going to be more, more insane, crazy, crazier than the times that had gone on before it. Uh, but at the same time, it's the same kind of tribulation. It didn't say here the great tribulation. It said those who have gone through great tribulation. You understand? So what were the ceilings for? It was their, the ceiling was explaining the great tribulation whether they had gone through. It's not an external uh, per se, great tribulation where everybody is running around, you know, we are now refugees in other places. Yeah, those things will happen. It has always been happening in human history. You have always seen trade, I mean, slaves taking warfare among nations and all of that. But what makes it different is that it is the, it is the world working is what it, they, they know to do best. They're working it out uh, by, uh, in us, they're helping the Lord to work it out in us by attacking us physically. Uh, physically, you know, not with guns and bows and arrows, but physically by the situations that they, are, they create around us. For example, I always say this, the young lady wants to get a job, and then the, the, the manager that is supposed to give him the job says, okay, the young lady meets me in a hotel, and of course the young lady already knows what that means. Now the young lady now refuses to meet the, the, uh, the boss in the hotel, and then so she loses the job. So she doesn't have money. Maybe for one year she doesn't have money. Maybe sometimes she has to call her father and say, Dad, please, can you get me some money? And then sometimes she has to cry and say, Oh, Lord, why is my own like this? And all that. See that my friend, she has gotten a job. I don't mean that her friend did anything to get the job. Maybe she just got the job. Maybe that's not the point of our friend's trial. You understand? Your friend may be a believer. It may not be that point. But there is a trial that is measured out to us per time and per season. And those trials that are measured, up, that are measured to us Per time and per season are trials that are um, that will help us, the natural man, to be put to death so that it will not govern us anymore, so that it will not govern our lives anymore. And that is what it is. That is the that is the great tribulation. If you were see, you're not going through great tribulation, God does not recognize you as going through great tribulation. If like that lady, you you were told to come and then you went and then you slept with the boss and then the boss give, gives you the job, a good job. You are not going through great tribulation. In fact, you are deferring your tribulation. God is not going to kill you. He says, oh, because you slept with somebody, I'm going to kill you. You're not going my child. No, 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 that's not what God does. God is patient because what he wants is not to destroy us. It is to bring us to salvation. So uh, in order to get promotion, you will meet the same thing. Did you get it? In order to get promotion, you will meet the same issue. Why are you meeting the same issue in order to get promotion? Because you didn't overcome it at that time. So, if, so the time you now decide, okay, I'm not going to sleep with this man anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore. Then you know what is going to happen? You are not going to be promoted. Maybe for 10 years, 15 years, you just notice that you are not promoted. And the man is 
striking you everywhere, making sure that no, people that are supposed to promote you to, to write good reports about you, don't write good reports about you. Because you have to go through that tribulation. And a lot of times, you know, this is the issue with the, the, the faith movement and um, all that we always say. You know, we pray and fast for 40 days and they say, oh God, no let this, you understand. And they want to escape that tribulation. But you see, we can pray and fast, but if we we face the tribulation but God will deliver us. It's not a perpetual tribulation. You understand what I'm saying? You know, it's not a perpetual. I don't mean that, okay, whenever you have any issue now, you don't, you just, oh, I'm going through process. No, no, no. No. But I'm saying that there is um, a time when, if you walk with God, you understand, the heart of the man determines both time and judgment. If you walk with God, you will know what God is saying no to and you know when God is saying pray against this. It is, you know, and God wants us to get to the place where, we, where he puts his hand in our hands and leads us by the way to go. Say, I'm the Lord, I will lead you by the way to go and I will teach you to prosper. Hallelujah. So this is, the, this is the way, that's the way it works. That's the way the tribulation works. The tribulation, let me say, tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed. Why are we able to bear everything in hope that we are delivered? Because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's see. I think I'll begin to round up now because I have another meeting somewhere else. Okay, so, and he said unto them, and then, um, okay, verse 10, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, we stood upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about on the throne and about the elders and the, okay. And one of the elders said, verse 13, that's saying unto me, what are these that are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes. Did you see? They washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They didn't make them white in the blood of their works. How do you make robes white in blood? If you dip dipped a, 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 a white robe inside blood, how is it going to come out? Is it going to be white? So this is why you know that these are symbolic words. Hallelujah. Here you dip a clothing inside. What color is blood? The, blo the, the blood color is red. So if, like, like what I'm wearing now, this is blood color. So if you, if you dip it inside blood, it's not going to come out white. <laughs> it's going to come out red. But this is it's coming out white. Why? Because it is what it is the blood of a lamb and the blood of a lamb makes us when it washes us makes us entirely whole hallelujah makes us entirely whole and i pray that the lord will grant unto us to be able to bear the tribulations that are programmed for us uh, for us not to run away from it from them and that for god to grant us grace so that uh the debt to the natural man will be totally fulfilled so that we can be counted worthy to rule and reign with the lord in jesus name thank you very much for all those who will see yet to watch and those who have been watching, please help us to share these videos. Help us to like them so that we can know that you came, that you passed through. I like to know those who watch me. Sometimes we, when we have a meeting, or we have something very important to do. We note them and then we, we tag them because they have already watched us before. And we tag them, we write letters to them and say, okay, we would like you to watch more of these. We have an interesting teaching to do, which we believe will be good for your spiritual growth and enlightenment so uh, we can write them that way so that they can join us you know sometimes people need notification not, they didn't want to uh, they didn't come around to see not because they didn't they don't want to be because they did not know what needs to be discussed and all that they were not given prior notification uh, so uh, and I would like to uh, uh, appreciate those who joined us every time Pastor Sophie thank you very much God bless you I see you um, very, very, very soon, teaching some of these things fluently, even better than I'm able to teach it. You know, if I had to teach faith, I can teach faith strongly. And if I had to teach these things, I can, you know. And, uh, and I believe that the same spirit of faith and the same teaching spirit is given to you um,
to be able to expound this to the church. I'm talking to Pastor Sophie now. I want to appreciate Brother Talkma also, who comes and joins us every morning. Uh, I believe that the Lord is ex expanding your heart and making you strong. And for all those who join us from time to time also, Sister Joy and all of them, um, God bless you so much for being a part of this meeting every time we come together. Please, if you've been joining and we don't know that you've been coming, please put a sign by liking it. God bless you so much. <laughs> then um, I'd like to announce to us that we're having uh, what we call healing rooms when I will have enough time and when I'll create time to, to speak to people who, uh, who need healing and who need bodily, he and bodily healing and the atonement to be, uh, to be measured to them, their bodies, their minds, their souls, their emotions. Uh, it's going to be starting very soon. We're preparing for it. And God will help us to bring it to... Uh, it's going to be online so that we can sit in their homes and their offices and then receive the word of healing and experience the power of God over their, li over their bodies and their minds. God bless you. Thank you very much. Tomorrow we meet again.